Welcome to the Dances with Films documentary Q&A for Roy's World, Barry Giffords, Chicago. And I'm joined today by Rob Christopher, Barry Gifford, and Lily Taylor. Thank you so much for taking time out to join us here at the Dances with Films Film Festival. Wanna, Great to be here. Thank you. Want to start off with just recognizing that what this film is not is an infomercial of Barry Gifford's work. It is really a beautiful tapestry of poetry and photography and stories. Was that your intention, Rob, when you first started putting this project together? Yes, I, I really wanted uh, Barry's work to speak for itself as much as it could in a film setting. So I just, I tried to choose an approach that would let the viewer kind of luxuriate in his language and find ways to enhance that with um, visuals and music and, you know, the right uh, performers of the stories, but really the words were, were the paramount to me. And Barry, when you watch this film, are you pleased with how your words just jump off the page and how they are presented? I mean, I just love this film. Oh, well, that's, I'm glad you did. You know, the thing is I gave Rob a very tough assignment because when he said, you know, he wanted to make this film about me and, and my work, I said, well, look, you know, because we were really concentrating on the Roy stories. And I said, well, this film should not be about Barry Gifford. It should be about Roy. So if you use that, you know, as, as the center, the unwobbling pivot, as it were, and just talked about Roy and showed his world. And of course, there's information about me and my life and all that. I created Roy, that's fine. But really he pulled something off that I really didn't think was possible in a way. He got it, he understood. I didn't want to have talking heads. I said, no talking heads and I'm not gonna be in the film. And I said, you can use archival footage, of course, you know, whatever it happens to be. And of course there's animation in it and the fabulous music score, you know, by Jason uh, Adamowitz. And it's, he, it was just beautiful. It was just really shock to everybody who, who, you know, who saw it in the early audience, you know, he really pulled it off. And Lily, what was your interpretation when you first saw the film? Were you so pleased with how the film presented you and how the whole story came to life? Yeah, you know, I wasn't even concerned about it, how it was gonna present me. I mean, I felt like the film, it, it was exactly what I knew it was gonna be when I first, when Rob first emailed me with a, describing what, what he wanted to do and would I be part of it. Um, I wasn't surprised at all. It, it's exactly what you're describing um, and I think what, what he envisioned. And I think we can all agree that the Lilies did a great job where the story just comes to life. The piece that you're in, Lily, it just has so much character and so much color and so much flair. I think the audience will agree that it's probably one of the most beautiful pieces in the film. Well, I would certainly, if I can just chip in here, I mean, you know, as I was just telling Lily, the section where she reads the story, Bad Girls, it's really beautifully done. And the animation by Lily Carre is, is wonderful. I mean, really beyond my imagination, I'd never seen animation quite like that before. And then just to have <laughs> Willem Dafoe and Matt Dillon and Lily Taylor reading the stories is a great gift. And I wonder, how, Lily, did you come to the project? How did you get connected? It's funny. Uh, I was looking over my emails to see how it did happen. And I looked at Rob's first email 
uh, I think it was 2016, four years ago. And, um, you know, he just, he reached out. I think he had, he knew Matt Dillon and asked Matt if, you know, he could reach out to me. And he just said, I'm a fellow sh shy boy. And, um, and this, I'm thinking of you for this. And would you jump on? And I said, absolutely. I love how things sometimes just come together so naturally. And Rob, your piece about just how Willem Dafoe's voice and Lily's voice and Matt's voice, I mean, did you have kind of a layout in your mind as to how the final film would look or was it more something that just kind of came to life as you were putting it all together? Well, there's a, there's a quote from uh, Philip Glass's autobiography that really speaks to me. And what he says is that um, if you don't know what to do, there's a good chance that you might do something interesting. Whereas if you know what you're doing, probably not much of interest is going to happen. So I started out making the film really not knowing how it was going to end up. It was just being open to the, you know, organic procedure of finding visuals that kind of went together. And I mean, to have such three amazing narrators in the same film is just beyond what I would have dreamed possible when I first started thinking about making this film. But I just, I wanted to trust in the organic process of everything coming together. Um, and, you know, with the actors, they all have such amazingly textured voices that just, you know, sound wonderful. So they're, they're just so amazing in the film. Gary, one of the things that I think a lot of people are always kind of excited about is when a writer is in a Q&A to know whether or not that writer is continuing to write and whether or not there are other stories that we can look forward to. Have you got any plans in the future to continue writing more stories? Well, there's a book coming out this month called Roy's World, the same what? as the film. It's, it's a big 720 something page book and it's called Roy's World Stories 1973 to 2020. So, I mean, this is a real doorstop. So yes, you have your wish. Uh, and, and it includes, you know, the, the stories that have previously been published, uh, plus 18 more. And, you know, again, it's just like when I wrote the Sailor and Lula novels that began with Wild at Heart, you know, it wound up being eight novels altogether. And even now, I'm, I thought I was done with Roy. But in fact, now I'm writing another book about wow. a novel yeah so uh you know it's just going to go on i guess as long as i go on it's that kind of thing and it's you know i'm writing history of a time and place which no longer exists and that's that's really uh what i wanted to do to capture this time which is basically the very late 1940s through the 1950s and early 60s and that's all gone, you know, and the world has changed so much, you know, given the, you know, the technological revolution, everything else that's, who knows what's next. I mean, we're getting some nasty surprises lately, but uh, I think this is really what I wanted to do was capture that thing. And just to add one more word about the, what I think is a kind of a miracle that Rob pulled off is that uh, I'd had a couple of films, you know, documentary features made before about me in France and Italy. And what I did not want was talking heads. I wanted the story to tell itself, just like the Roy's stories are, in a sense, you know, and in an elliptical way, not a chronological way. And uh, I still don't know how he did it exactly. Talk to Rob because he's the genius behind this. I agree. I think Rob is a genius. I mean, Rob, now you've got more stories. Will there be another follow-up documentary or another follow-up story that you'd like to tell? 
Uh, well, I don't know what I'm going to do next. I just, I know that it's not going to be the same. Um, I'm frankly mystified that I was able to finish this film um, and to have it come out in the fashion that it did. Uh, I'm not going to tempt fate by trying to do that again. So whatever my next project is going to be will be different. <laughs> nice. I know that um, Lily has been a part of Dances with Films this year in a big way. Uh, we're so thrilled, Lily, to be able to honor you this year. And I think you actually have a few films in our festival this year. Is that correct? I think, I think just a couple. And that's fine. I'm not complaining. But I, I think it's just two. <laughs> not bad. <laughs> That's, that's amazing. I mean, you're such a talent and I know everybody enjoys watching you and listening to you. I think that that's one of the things about an actor's voice and an actor's presence is that there's such a skill in being able to present the words and present yourself and you do it so beautifully. Thank you very much. Absolutely. You know, the other thing that struck me about the stories, Rob, that you chose, they are just, I mean, they just weave together so beautifully. Was it hard to kind of pick and choose the different stories? And how did you go about that? What was your process? Well, of course, uh, since Barry's been writing this stuff for more than 40 years, needless to say, there were a lot of stories to choose from. Um, and even once I started narrowing it down, a lot of my favorite stories just couldn't find a place in the film, unfortunately. You have to be sort of ruthless about what's working and what's not working. Um, to flow them together um, was, it's vaguely chronological as Roy is growing up. And there are some, you know, themes that sort of interweave through all the stories. So it was just finding the right flow. And uh, I knew that the two animated segments needed to come at the right moment in the film. Uh, you know, just when you think you know what the film is doing, let's have an animated segment so that your brain wakes up a little and you're looking at something new. So Chicago, Illinois, 1953, which is uh, Lily Carre's uh, segment is early in the film. And then towards the end, we have Bad Girls, uh, which is Kevin Eskew, Barry, by the way, did Bad Girls. Okay, that's right. Towards, right, so that's towards the end of the film, which is closer to, you know, the, the early 60s. So it needs to have a different visual style than, than the first story. So it was just a question of finding the right pacing and, you know, just seeing how the pieces would fit together. I think that there are so many stories to choose from. Are there some favorite stories that you have, Barry? Oh, well, favorite stories? I, I, you know, that's not really a question that I answered because I see it as a whole. I mean, it all flows together. It's, like, it's just like this, you know, a, these different rivers that flow into the ocean, you know. And in fact, the Roy book that I'm writing now is called The Boy Who Ran Away to Sea. And uh, which is funny, which is what my wife, Mary Lou, has often called me because that's in fact what I did when I was 18 years old and, you know, went to work on ships. And uh, that was it, you know, that's where my education of the sort began. And so I don't have any... I mean, I sure I have favorite stories. I have things that work one way better than another, but no, it's all the same to me. It's all one big story, you know? It's the easiest way to describe it. Lily, do you have a favorite story that you kind of uh, are excited about or look to when you think of Barry's work? You know, so I love that metaphor the, that you just used, Barry. I just love that because, because they all, they all lead to the sea, all those rivers. And one river is not more valuable than the other. Um, 
So no, I don't. And I have, and then I'm going to use that one for characters as well, because that's something I get asked with characters. And it's just like, it's a really hard, um, it's just not even, the question doesn't work with that whole realm, you know, like, anyway, so no, I don't. <laughs> Lily, Lily, do you, do you remember the movie, the Saragossa Manuscript? Did yeah. you ever see it? And so I always loved the structure of the Saragossa Manuscript and going back and forth through time and, you know, different people, uh, you know, telling the same story, but the details are different and the outcomes are different and all that kind of thing. And that's what goes on through Roy's world, both the book and, you know, the film. And I think, we're, you know, really Rob was able to capture that. Rob, you must be smiling from ear to ear, hearing people talk so positively about you and about your film. I wanna make sure that if there are questions that I give people an opportunity to ask their questions. Are there questions for our panelists? Are you looking at the, the Q&A from the, from the audience? I am. Yeah. I have a backup moderator who is talking with audience members as we are talking. So wanted to give an opportunity for questions. Why don't I continue with some of the questions that I have for you? I think that, Rob, one of the amazing things about this piece of work is that it goes through a lot of different ways of telling stories. Was there a certain kind of process that you went through to choose photography, animation, poetry that was kind of, you know, something that you learned or something that you have just, you know, kind of mastered along the way? Well, what I've learned is that the obvious image rarely works or rarely is the golden choice. You have to find an image that has some sort of strange resonance with everything else that's going on. Um, one example is um, Barry's story about the JFK assassination. I mean, yeah, I could have shown the Zapruder film or something like that, but um, it's the story itself is not really about that. It's about, you know, where were you when that happened? So when I, when I randomly came across this a uh, newscast that had been accidentally preserved on a videotape back in the 70s. Uh, this, you know, shaky black and white pixelated uh, news broadcast. I, I thought that if I slowed it down and I just like let that play out for several moments over the story, which is called Shattered, um, that it would kind of fuse with the words and make something really interesting, like a third thing in the viewer's imagination. So that was really my strategy for the movie as a whole. It was finding, finding the way to combine elements in a strange way that would activate your imagination. I think you did it beautifully. Uh, some of the comments that are coming from our audience are how much they enjoyed everyone in the film. So the choices that you made for the talent that actually were the people who spoke Barry's words, I think people really enjoyed. So you should just know that that's a comment that's come from the audience. It's great to hear. And, and I also wanted to add that an integral part of the movie is uh, the jazz score by Jason Adeshevitz, who read the, read the stories, but really brought his own creativity and um, just gathered a fantastic cast of jazz players to help bring that score to life. So we actually recorded the score before I even started editing, which meant that I had a sort of uh, music library to draw from during the editing. And uh, it, it just, when I put Lily's voice with that music for the first time, just to see if it would work, and it did actually work, I was so overjoyed by that. 
Well, another thing about that really, Debbie, is that, you know, we have Lily's voice, we have Matt Dillon's voice, we have Willem Dafoe's voice, and my voice in there. But I mean, they're all really distinct from one another. And, you know, that's, sometimes you get a, a kind of a uniformity, which doesn't work. But in this way, I always felt it was fresh when another speaker came, you know, and some another narrator showed up. Uh, and that's what I meant about not having uh, talking heads, you know, not, I just think that's just too dry a format. And this was very alive. That's the thing about it. Everything in the film was fresh. When something, you know, you change, you know, sequences, it's fresh, it's new. And, you know, there's something special to look at. I tried to keep the audience on their toes from moment to moment. You did a great job. I think we do have a question. I want to go ahead and make sure that I address all the questions. Go ahead. Do you feel like Roy's world would translate well into a television show? And <laughs> Barry's face is just lighting up right now. That was one well, of the I first things he said after he saw the movie. <laughs> well, my Remember. idea was, you know, to do it as an animated series. And, uh, you know, I just thought that that was when I saw the animation, you know, that Rob had come up with, uh, that gave me this, rather than doing, uh, you know, a live action feature. In fact, uh, there was a director who held the rights to it, the dramatic rights for about three years, and still is coming back about it. But, you know, his plan was to do a live, live action feature. But uh, I don't know, I'd just rather see it in an animated series. Or if it was, you know, some kind of TV series, it would wind up like, you know, what's that show? Wonder, Wonder Days, Wonder Boys, or whatever that was. Rob, you would know what I'm talking about. Um, but sort of with a, you know, an, a bad edge to it. Well, I think, I, it, I think um, it could work. Well, it as a TV show. Rob, how do you feel? I mean, the thing I love about Barry's stories is you don't need to read them in any particular order. You can really read them in random order and they still work. They all sort of, you know, build together over time. So a TV series naturally lends itself to that kind of storytelling. So sure, why not? There any, if there's anyone watching who wants to be an executive producer, please give me a call. <laughs> I think that's a, a great way to end our q and I want to thank Barry Gifford for joining us and Lily Taylor. I think you both are in uh, Chicago right now. Is that right? Lily is. Oh, okay. Barry, you're not in Chicago. And uh, Rob, I believe you are in Chicago. Yep, I'm in Chicago. Barry's in San Francisco, well, Berkeley. Nice. Yeah. Well, after the Q&A, I invite everyone to go to the lobby so that that way they can continue the conversation. I thank you all so much for taking the time out and uh, look forward to seeing more of Roy's world in whatever iteration is next. So thank you once again for such a beautiful film. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you, Debbie. My pleasure. Good evening and welcome back to Dances with Films 23, the pandemic proof film festival. That's right. 
coronavirus, you can't stop us, we're making it happen. It doesn't matter that you're global because you know what? Dances with Films is global and we're taking over you because we got filmmakers from all over the world. We got films coming in from the entire planet Earth. So you got nothing to say. Boom, boom, boom. Today we have a fantastic another array of films. This is day seven of Dances with Films 23 and we are bringing you things like feature films, we're bringing you short films, documentaries, music videos, even stuff for the kids. So we get a little bit of everything for you folks and industry panels uh, so you can learn from uh, industry professionals such as Jane Fleming and uh, many other uh, hot names that will teach you about finance, distribution, casting, and many other aspects of the business. So make sure that you join us. Uh, you can see the schedule at dwfla.com and you can even join us there in the lobby, which is there's a lobby link there that you can click on and come and chat with us live and ask us questions and meet other filmmakers. Today with me in the room right now live, I have somebody from the film Roy's World. And we're gonna learn about this film and we are excited to have it premiere. Tell us your name and what you did on the film. Hi, Jose. Uh, my name is Rob Christopher and I am the director and producer of Roy's World. Fantastic. Tell us a little bit about the film. Well, it's sort of uh, an impressionistic, uh, gritty look at 1950 Chicago. Uh, seen through a bunch of amazing archival footage and even some animated sequences, uh, which use the uh, stories of Barry Gifford as a way into that time and place. And uh, the stories in the film are narrated by Matt Dillon, Willem Dafoe, and Lily Taylor. Fantastic. I'm a big Willem Dafoe fan myself. I love him playing the villain. Yeah, he's got uh, this amazing gravelly voice, which is all over the soundtrack of my film. So it's just a pleasure to listen to his voice. Fantastic. And uh, Rob, what inspired uh, you to do this film? Uh, well, I wanted to make a film about Chicago for a long time, but wasn't really sure, you know, how specifically to sort of find a way into that subject. Uh, when I came across Barry Gifford's Roy stories, uh, which he's written over a period of more than 40 years, uh, they sort of explore the world of his childhood. I thought that was a really interesting uh, perspective on the city to sort of look at it through a child's point of view. And the fact that it mostly takes place in the 50s and early 60s uh, made it even more interesting. So I thought it would kind of uh, build the film around that. Awesome. And what challenges or um, issues did you face uh, in the effort of making this? Well, like every other filmmaker you've talked to during the festival, uh, money was a challenge. Um, despite having those actors attached, it was tricky to get back into make a film that was a little more arty and abstract, I guess you could say. Um, and beyond that, it was just um, a challenge to find the right visuals for the sort of uh, story that I wanted to tell. So it just took a lot of time and sort of uh, patience and organically it, it finally came together. Awesome. And, and where, did, where did you shoot your documentary? Well, that's the thing about my documentary. It has no footage. It has no new footage in it. It's all archival stuff. Um, except for one tiny sequence near the end, which uh, I won't spoil if you haven't seen the film. Um, aside from that, it's all stuff that's drawn from um, archives, museums, personal collections, uh, places like that. Wow. Um, how many months or, or years would you say it took you to, to gather all of that enough to make the, the film you wanted to make? Well, I started on the film in 2016 and basically got to picture lock last year. So uh, about three years. Yeah. Wow. Dedication. Yeah, it's very, very common thing here at uh, the Dances with Films Festival with uh, most of the filmmakers. They started, you know, you know, a few years ago, maybe several years ago. And here they are with their product. And uh, it really shows through their effort. That's fantastic. And how excited are you to be at Dances with Films? I am really 
really super excited. Obviously, I wish that I was at the Chinese theaters instead, but this is a this is a really nice substitute. Um, the the fact that the that the festival has managed to put on such an amazing show with such short notice, you know, it's kind of like the Wild Wild West doing a virtual film festival, but uh, it's really come together very smoothly. So I'm really impressed. Fantastic, and we're certainly happy to have you, Rob Christopher. Uh, we wish you the best with your premiere. Um, we're excited to have all of our filmmakers here as they have been handpicked out of thousands of submissions to be here at Dances with Films 23. Thank you so much for joining us, Rob Christopher. Ladies and gentlemen, make sure that you check out his documentary, Roy's World, here at Dances with Films. Have a great, fantastic evening. <laughs>